Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and by now I hope you have mostly heard that uh, SpaceX was very successful at launching a rocket that was able to then return back home using an autonomous navigation system. Well, did you know that other space agencies back in the days actually tried to develop something similar but actually weren't very successful? Well, today we're going to talk about one of these ideas and we're going to talk about so-called self-returning boosters. Welcome to What The Math. And so these reusable boosters were actually studied by the Russians, by the Americans, and by the Europeans, and they also came up with really interesting prototypes. Uh, all of them could have actually been used by now, but for reasons of finances and also impracticality, they decided not to continue these uh, designs. Now, uh, we're going to start with the German Aerospace Center that basically came up with this really cool liquid flyback booster, but had to unfortunately cancel it. And they actually studied this back in 1999 up to about 2004, and they would actually be able to replace a much older and much more dangerous uh, solid booster that is still used today, unfortunately. And although this prototype didn't really have a cool name or anything like that, uh, they were basically planning to operate them um, with their Ariane 5 rockets, uh, which you can see on the screen right now, from the uh, Guiana Space Center. And, and so what they would essentially do is strap them to the rocket and first use them as a regular booster. And then when the liquid fuel was expanded and the boosters were no longer useful, they would release them. And these boosters would basically use their gliding ability to uh, first fly back to the lower altitude where they would then engage uh, air breathing engines that would actually be located in their uh, nose and use these air breathing engines to return back to Guiana Space Center and land there using a regular horizontal airplane landing strip. But unfortunately, as of late 2009, this program has been actually scrapped and is no longer being studied. And the, one of the reasons for this is actually kind of silly. The first designs were very, very simple, very cheap. They had one engine and they were relatively small. But by 2004, the uh, redesigned version of this particular booster was so large that it was basically equivalent to a large passenger jet and was a bit impractical, kind of expensive, and would be very difficult to maintain as well. But the idea here was to basically use these with the main launching platform known as Ariane 5. And even though this was about 41 meters or 135 feet long and about uh, 5 meters or 17 feet in diameter, it would have been actually a pretty interesting way of launching these rockets and basically save a lot of money on producing uh, more dangerous and less environmentally friendly solid boosters. And they were even uh, planning to use these with heavy area launchers and there they would basically uh, attach five boosters that would then fly to an altitude of about 50 kilometers and uh, then be released and glide back to Earth. And this is of course for a so-called super heavy launcher which would basically be capable of launching spacecraft uh, that would then be able to land on the moon or even go to Mars. Now, a very similar program known as Reusable Booster System, or RBS, was also studied by the United States Air Force, and unfortunately, after about two years, and this was back in 2010-2012, they also cancelled it for very similar reasons of it just not being practical and costing way too much. But interestingly, of course, there's also the Russian version of all of this, which was also uh, a relatively old design, and the uh, first mention of it was in 1998. And uh, this is actually the only program that hasn't really officially been cancelled yet, but even after, what, 17 years now, we still haven't really seen them in action then, so it's still technically just a design. And this is actually known as the Baikal Booster, and Baikal is the name of the largest... Uh, freshwater lake that's located somewhere in the eastern Russia and basically this particular booster would be attached to the uh, Angara type of rockets and would then use the similar control systems and flyback systems that were used in the Soviet Buran orbiter that was actually launched in late 80s and then was able to not only fly itself back but land autonomously using nothing but essentially computer controls and that was actually a pretty impressive achievement. And this particular booster would have um, a kind of a really interesting folding wing stored uh, on the fuselage that would then deploy as soon as the booster was released. 
and using this wing it would then uh, glide back to lower altitude, engage its engine that's also located in the nose and fly back to Placet's Cosmodrome. And one of the reasons why Russians may actually end up producing this particular booster is because uh, of where they're planning to launch these rockets from. It's actually going to be inland, it's going to be relatively close to civilian population, and so not using reusable boosters or boosters that basically are not just going to crash on land is kind of dangerous, and so for this reason they might end up producing an afterall. And I have a feeling that because uh, sudden SpaceX success may actually lead to both Russians and the French losing a lot of clients, they might end up producing these afterall because this is the only way they will be able to save money launching different satellites for different companies. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to say in this video, and as you can see, I was able to actually land my own booster as well. It was actually relatively challenging at first because you're essentially released uh, in the part of the atmosphere where there's very, very little air, so you have to try to not crash and uh, regain control of your aircraft and then use the air burden engine to fly back to Kerbal Space Center. And although this is obviously not as impressive as SpaceX's uh, self-landing rockets, the first stage that is basically being used for all of the SpaceX launches Nevertheless, I think using the self lighting boosters is actually quite impressive as well and would definitely not only save money but provide an additional technology that is actually kind of cool. I think it would be pretty awesome to see and to watch these boosters land and I think it would definitely inspire the new generation of engineers and possibly space explorers because seeing these things land would, would be actually pretty cool. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll talk about something else, space, science or math related or possibly play a video game. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to share this, don't forget to like it, and possibly even subscribe. Game you later, guys. Bye-bye.